last night I was able to see the latest Spy Kids film, Spy Kids Armageddon. So let's talk about it. Hi, my name is Sean and I love to talk about movies and TV way too much. With that in mind, go ahead and join me down below in the comments section. Let me know your thoughts on the Spy Kids franchise and if you've seen the latest film Armageddon, what did you think about it? So I was able to see the movie at the first public screening and it was actually a pretty cool experience because it was at the Paramount Theater in downtown Austin and Robert Rodriguez was in attendance. And as kind of a point of reference, the Paramount Theater in Austin, Texas, it's like a hundred year old theater, right? more than that, I think at this point in time. And it has like a gigantic balcony. And I mean, it has chandeliers. It has those little booths that fancy theaters used to have. And it's right in the heart of downtown Austin on Congress Avenue, right in front of the Texas Capitol. And if you have seen these Spy Kids movies, inevitably in every single Spy Kids movie, including in the new one, they go racing by the Texas Capitol down Congress Avenue. So basically you're seeing the movie in a theater on the road where the movie was shot. And beyond that, uh, Robert Rodriguez brought several different props from the mo different all the different movies, the jetpacks, the suits from Spy Kids 3D, and then the little carts from the latest film that drove down Congress Avenue. He had them sitting on Congress Avenue as we left the theater. So that's just always a neat experience. And in particular with these movies where Robert Rodriguez made them for his kids and now he makes them with his kids. So being at kind of the first premiere of the film where he brought his family to the movie, including like his parents and sisters and all kinds of family members. It just added a nice energy into the theater. It's a great way to get to see a film like this and then bringing my kids along who like the Spy Kids movies, getting to be at just kind of this very memorable theater in a memorable environment with props from the movies and everything. It was really cool. Now, as for the movie itself, it's always a little bit difficult to review a film like this because Robert Rodriguez overtly makes these movies for kids. They're not family films, they're kids films. And there's a difference. Family films are movies that are made for the entire family. If you go see The Incredibles and you're a kid, it's a lot of fun because there's superheroes and supervillains, but at its core, it's a movie about a guy having a midlife crisis. It's very easy for adults to connect on a very deep level with the story that superficially is incredibly entertaining for children. Or you go see Finding Nemo, you can connect with Nemo if you're a kid and there's all sorts of talking animals and fish and stuff, so it makes it fun. At its core, it's a movie about parenting and letting go. Marlon's the one that really has an arc. Those are family films. Contrast that with a kid's movie, it's a movie that's overtly made to appeal for, to kids, just kids. It, it doesn't really have a deeper meaning for adults or anything like that. It's designed for them on their level, on every layer of the film. And the Spy Kids movies have always done that and they've never shied away from it, they've never hid from it, and they've never been embarrassed by it. Robert Rodriguez is trying to entertain children. I took two of my kids to go see this movie. They, we rewatched all the Spy Kids films over the last month. They thoroughly enjoy the franchise. They were like eagerly waiting to watch each of the next installments and they were excited to go see this new film. And they had a lot of fun with the movie. In fact, here's what my daughter had to say. I really like the movie. Add like new characters and a new story. It takes a bunch of twists and turns. And I just think it was a really good movie overall. I mean, it's a Spy Kids movie. I like the series. So if the purpose of this movie is to entertain children, anecdotally speaking, my two children were entertained by it. They got exactly what they wanted out of the film. And I kept looking over at them all throughout the film, just kind of see how they're reacting to it. They were smiling at all the right times, having an absolute blast with the entire experience and the film itself. As a critic, as a grown up, this isn't a movie that I would ever just choose to watch on my own. There's so many things about it that it intentionally leans into all sorts of kind of corny elements or tropes of the genre that are intentionally just the stereotypes of the genre. So I watch it and I'm like, really, we're doing this again? Really, we're still doing this? 
When those moments happened where I felt like I should roll my eyes, I'd look over at my nine-year-old daughter and she'd have a big grin on her face because she was tracking along with all of it. It's written very much to be on their level and have kind of the worldview of children of what would be an escapist fantasy for children. That's what this movie is. And so it kind of lives in this world of like, tr like the setup for the film involves trading cards. That's exactly the world my kids live in. <laughs> They've got boxes and boxes of Pokemon trading cards. In fact, on the way to go see this film, we went to McDonald's and currently at McDonald's, the Happy Meal toy are Pokemon trading cards, which my kids were very excited about. And then a lot of the rest of the movie ties into kids using technology, being better at technology than adults, which is my day-to-day -day life. And so it's very much playing into a fantasy of children intentionally and doing all sorts of things that might make my eyes roll, might make me cringe a little bit, but puts a smile on their face. That's kind of difficult to review because from my perspective, that was this like an awesome film that I super connected with? No, but I haven't been the target age for this movie since 30 years before this movie was made. So try to dive into some of the specifics of it. You have Zachary Levi as our new parent in the mix. And uh, I think he's great for this type of role. And I'd, I'd even say he's probably better for a role like this than Antonio Banderas was in the first three films. And what I mean by that is that Zachary Levi, his specific skill set is playing an immature adult. That's what he's so good at, is playing a man child. That's why he was Shazam. And that's what he was doing on Chuck. And so he can play into a movie like this where you're supposed to have kind of a corny version of an adult and do it really well. He gets in on the action and he can play the silliness. He can play these very broad, goofy jokes with sincerity in the way that some other people can. So be totally clear, I love Antonio Banderas. That is in no way, in any way, to put him down in what he did in the previous Spy Kids films. But I think Zachary Levi's specific skill set, what he's uniquely good at, benefits this exact kind of movie. He had great rapport with the wife that he was playing, or uh, his wife in the film. And so they, they can just lean into it in a way and they have a sincerity to their performances. When it comes to the, our two kids in this movie, uh, you know, I don't feel they were quite as memorable as our original kids from the, the first trilogy of films. And I think that's kind of the problem that the movie that came out 10 years ago, the fourth one likewise had that similar problem of just the, something special about the casting back 20 years ago with the kids that they were able to snag there. And so they just played a little bit more kind of generic. He's a boy that likes video games um, and doesn't like rules. She likes rules and she's smart. I like get just very simplistic and there wasn't, I don't know, I just didn't find them quite as interesting. The movie itself feels like a little bit of a blend of the original movie with kids discovering their parents are spies with the third movie, them going into video games. It's a very video game heavy plot line. So it kind of blends those together of some of the stronger elements that I think worked for kids in the original trilogy of films. Several people have asked me, does it tie into the original films? I didn't see any overt connections. I'm by no means an expert on the Spy Kids films, but it, there wasn't like a sequence where we're like hanging out with the two kids from the original sets of films or anything like that. It's nothing overt. The movie could take place in that universe, it also could be a total reboot in its own universe that just happens to play the exact same way. Um, in general, I, when I look at movies like this where they're, they're designed for my kids, I think, were my kids entertained? And did it send messages that I have issues with as a parent? And sometimes movies that are made for kids, the way that they tackle it, the way that they present parents and like, it's okay, you trust your friends, not your parents. There's messages that can be in children's movies that make me not like them. So I, I look at this movie, were my kids entertained? Yes, they were. Did it have some good messaging to it? Robert Rodriguez intentionally kind of goes into these movies and tries to send simplistic messages about following the rules, 
being kind to one another, don't just use violence. And even in his talking about the movie afterwards, make that entire point. Like, hey, if you look at each of the spy move, kids movies, one of the big points we always go for at the end of the film is that the kids don't defeat the enemy. They're able to like make the enemy be a better person. And so they kind of tie that message in. There's a little bit of awkward stuff about kids and technology. And there's a whole plot line about the kids only having so many hours they can be on technology. And there's kind of a weird message about that was wrong. They should have been allowed to be on technology more and the games make them a better person. I was like, that was a little bit weird, but nothing, nothing too overt. That was like countering messages I'm trying to teach my kids. So overall, uh, I think it's a movie that it's target audience children. They will enjoy this film. It's more of what worked about the movies before. If you grew up watching the original films and you're now like 25, it's not gonna recapture the magic of your childhood. But if you're currently watching the old Spy Kids films like those movies, I would guess that you'd probably like this movie too. Now keep in mind, I've always watched the Spy Kids movies as an adult. The first one came out when I was 19 years old. These movies have never been movies targeting me. I didn't grow up watching them. Uh, I think the fourth one is the weakest, but not like it's dramatically less than the other films the way people in my comment section have implied. So uh, maybe I have a different perspective on the films, but as someone with kids the current age, my kids enjoyed this film like they enjoyed the rest of the movies in the franchise. I don't think I can really score the film because I don't know, I struggle to even know what I rate a film that I'm evaluating more as a father than as a movie lover or as a critic. But I will say if you're a grown up and you don't have kids, I have no clue why you would watch this movie. If you like the Spy Kids movies, you'll have fun with this one, I would imagine. And if you have kids that like the Spy Kids movies, I'm sure they'll have a good time with this one as well. And besides a little bit of a weird message about technology being good, I think it, it has a nice message for kids about don't use violence to solve problems. There you have it. There's my thoughts on the latest Spy Kids movie. And keep talking movies and TV too much. Bye-bye.